Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is The Encourager. Thank you so much for stopping by. It is January 1st, 2023. This is The Encourager from The Encouraging Vessel coming to you today to give you a word and or encouragement from the Lord Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, it is to be noted that God is righteous, and I'm sure you know this, but ever so often we need to be reminded. Um, so many are walking around and or living, demonstrating ways as if the God of the universe needs them. I'm here to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, God does not need you. He is all sufficient. And with this information, with this knowledge, it behoves all of us to exercise and or develop humility and come to the Father because we need him, ladies and gentlemen. He does not need us. And because many act as if, oh my word, the Lord Jesus is he's, um, pursuing me. He absolutely needs me. And because of that, many of you are in being irreverent to the Father. And so I want to bring that to you today. And I know that some of the things that I bring on here, I know some have a hard time receiving it. But the intent is to convict you. The intent is to arrest your thoughts. And know that it is the Father you need to look to. Now, in Psalms 90, verse 2, it reads, this is in reference to the Father. It says, before the mountains were born, or you gave birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. The Father is self-sufficient, ladies and gentlemen. And I did a video a few weeks ago, I think, or perhaps less. And I stated that we are made for his pleasure and his glory. It's unfortunate that many will be lost because of pride and so the intent of this message today is to allow you to consider humility, consider being humble. Revelations chapter one, verse eight says, and this is Jesus Christ speaking. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Ladies and gentlemen, I remind the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he is self-sufficient. We need him more than we can even fathom, more than we can even understand, more than we can even put into words. We don't just need him for some things. Well, I know for sure, I don't just need him for some things. I need him for absolutely everything. I cannot think of something in my life or an event in my life that I do not need the Father. So I would encourage you to shake the mindset 
because of that many are not coming to the Father. Many are sitting and waiting. But I remind the Most High is self-sufficient. Before you and I were, before the existence of the earth, which he fashioned, he is, therefore, he is the I am. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 15 reads, Who alone, or, you know, instead of who, I'm going to say he, he alone possesses immortality and dwells in unapproachable light whom no man has seen or can see to him be honor and eternal dominion. Ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you To execute humility and if you struggle here as I've said in the past anything that you need and I, th I believe that sometimes when you read the scripture or you hear the scripture read and the father says the Lord Jesus Christ says anything you are thinking of perhaps a material thing. Yes, we need him in those instances. But to enable your growth, to enable your growth in relationship with the Father to thrive, if there's things that are missing in your life, and I'm certain there are, and perhaps you're not aware of some of the things, perhaps you don't remember some of the sins that you have committed. He said, ask me anything. So you, I encourage you to find your prayer closet. And this is personal. Communication with the Father, it is personal. And that's why you'll never see me on camera here saying, let me pray. It is a personal communication between you and the Father. It is not for show. So get to your prayer closet. Get to your private time with the Father. Be completely open. Be completely naked with Him. Bring everything out. I was explaining that to my son this morning. Just bring everything out. If you can sit and speak to your partner or your children or family member and say, this is what I'm feeling. What is holding you back from getting into your prayer closet and saying, Father, this is what's happened. Or Father, this is how I feel. And I'm upset. And, and Father, I'm upset with you. Because we do get upset. We do get frustrated. But know this, that the Father already knows your heart. So, we need the Father. He welcomes us. He wants us to come into his fold. He's not rejecting us. He's inviting. But the mindset that the Father needs you needs to go out the door and you need to cultivate humility. Cultivate humility and come boldly, unashamedly to the foot of the cross, to the throne room and have that conversation with him. As you are bridging into a new year, and yes, it is a new year. If you are here on earth, it is a new year according to the calendar that we are using. You do not know what is ahead. I do not know what is ahead. None of us knows because we're not seers. Unless the father comes to you and says, oh, by the way, John, by the way, Sharon or Harry or Sally, this is what is coming up. You do not know. 
And so the father instructs and says, prepare continuously. And that is a word he gave me, gave me a few weeks ago, prepare continuously. Ladies and gentlemen, you need the father. You need him in every aspect of your life. And as we've turned a new page in this era called time, you need him more than ever. You do not know if this is your year. You do not know if this is your hour. And perhaps some of you don't like to hear that conversation, but it is reality. Now, Let's go to Psalms 102. Psalms 102, verse 25 to 27 reads, Of old, speaking of the Father, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. Even they will perish, but you will endure. And all of them will wear out like a garment, like clothing, you will change them and they will be changed. But you are the same and your years will not come to an end. The Father is eternal. He is self-sufficient. And I am privileged that he has called me. Ladies and gentlemen, allow humility to take root. And I believe that is what the Father wants to leave with you today. It is not to turn you away. It is for you to understand who he is. Because many are looking to the Father as mere man. Many are limiting the authority and the power of the Most High. We cannot imagine, though we read, and unless the Father gives understanding, we don't understand. Though we read the words, it, though we read the words in the Bible, and it speaks of his awesomeness, it speaks of how terribly awesome he is. Our, simply, our simple mind cannot conceive who he truly is. He is a mystery, as the Bible says, ladies and gentlemen. But at the same time, does he love us? Yes. Does he instruct us? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to you this afternoon as the Father would encourage me to encourage you to let you know the God of Abraham, the God of the universe, Jesus Christ himself, who fashioned this earth, who created you and I and everything that is, he's not in need of us. We're created for his pleasure and for his glory. So in humility, let us go to him. In humility, let us go to him. God is self-existing. He is the great I am. You and I need him absolutely. So, let us exercise humility, ladies and gentlemen. And let us come boldly to the throne and ask the Father. Ask the Father anything. Now, I mean, my mind, the Lord brought to my attention Job. And I'm in Job chapter 4, verse 4, verse, verse, I'm sorry, 
That's Job chapter 4, verses 17 to 21. And this is speaking of the righteousness of God, because God is righteous, and we are wanting righteousness. We are wanting purity. We're, because without holiness, we will not see him. Without holiness, we cannot dwell in his presence. And we cannot make ourselves holy. So it makes perfect sense when the Father gives us an invitation. And it is an invitation. He says, come to me, ask me, ask anything in my name. And I will do it. And here in verse 17 of Job chapter 4, it says, Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly. How much less in them that dwell in the houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust. That's you and I, ladies and gentlemen, which are crushed before the moth. They are destroyed from morning to evening. They perish forever without any regarding it. Does not their excellency which is in them go away? They die, even without wisdom. Many die without wisdom. God is righteous, ladies and gentlemen. So I encourage you to humble yourself as First Peter 5, 6 through 7 says, Humble yourselves, then under God's mighty hand, so that he will lift you up in his own good time. Leave all your worries with him, because he does care for you. And this message is to encourage you to come to the Creator, come to the Father who is above all, and recognize who he is. Ladies and gentlemen, I also implore you, ask you to read the word. Anything and everything that you need, you're going to find it in the Bible. The Lord Jesus Christ is forgiven. And it doesn't matter what you have done. He said, bring it to me. Bring it to me. Humble yourself and come before the Father. Now, let's look at Second Chronicles 7 verse 14. It reads, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Humility is very important, ladies and gentlemen. And so I bring this word to you to encourage you. As you've turned a new page in this era called time. Remember, we are the clay. The father is the potter. He is above all, ladies and gentlemen. And some are not seeing this because you're not taking the time. You're not investing the time in the word and in developing a relationship with the Father. I encourage you, get in the word. Come boldly and humbly to the throne room. Humble yourself.
pray. Seek the Father. Ask him to guide you. Ask him to help you to come to him. It is that simple, ladies and gentlemen. It's exactly how I instruct my son. If you can come, if like I said to him, if you can come to me and said, well, I don't know what to say to the Lord today. That's simply it. You go to him and say, Father, I don't know what to say today. Help me. Because he knows the depths of your heart, the depths of your soul, before it is even come to your understanding. So you can go to him and say, I don't know what to say, Lord Jesus. I don't know what to say to you today. Or this is how I'm feeling. It's a relationship, ladies and gentlemen. And he is inviting you to come to him openly. I trust these words reach you and you're able to pull some encouragement out of them. Be blessed. This is the encourager from the encouraging vessel.